Today in Gaza, a United Nations official says nine people were killed and another 75 injured after two tank rounds. Sorry, after two tank rounds exploded, hitting a building where 800 displaced civilians were taking shelter. It comes as the Israeli military is intensifying its assault in the southern city of Khan Yunis. Thousands have been forced to flee the area, although many remain trapped inside, including hundreds of patients in the city's main hospital. There's also horrifying new video that shows the fatal shooting of a Palestinian man who was walking in a group with their hands wa raised and waving a white flag. That man had earlier spoken to an ITV journalist who took this video and explained in Arabic that his group was attempting to get other family members out of danger. The IDF told NBC News that they were not aware of this incident. Meanwhile, back here in the U.S., there are growing concerns among Democrats over Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's rejection of a potential Palestinian state. A group of House Democrats sent a letter yesterday to President Biden writing that they, quote, respectfully request that your administration outline a strategy to marshal international and ultimately Israeli and Palestinian support to successfully implement a two-state solution, adding that without a sovereign Palestinian state controlled and operated by a Palestinian government and a secure Israel, the conflict will continue to kill innocent civilians and drive instability in the region. Joining me now is one of the Democrats who signed on to that letter, Congressman Raja Krishnamurthy of Illinois. Congressman, thank you for being here. What has been the response from the White House to your letter? They acknowledge receipt. We're waiting for them to actually respond substantively and provide us a briefing with the answers that we requested. Can you talk about what the process would be? Because Palestine actually uh, sends a delegate to the United Nations. Uh, there was a piece, uh, I believe it was in the New York Times uh, a week or so ago, that's saying that could not, you know, the United States simply recognize Palestine as a state. Is that something that could be done, uh, you know, regardless of what Israel wants? I don't think so, because the... The borders of that state are not established. Obviously, the Palestinians, the Israelis would also want uh, security assurances. Um, and then the players in the region, from Saudi Arabia to other neighbors, would also have to recognize it. We want a durable peace so that we can end this cycle of violence once and for all. Let me read you uh, what Senator Sanders has said the United States military, uh, that the United States should do. They sh he's saying they should stop military aid to Israel um, because of Netanyahu's rejection of a two-state solution. President Biden must now loudly and clearly say no to the policies of Netanyahu's right-wing extremist government. That is what a true friend of Israel must do in this moment, and Congress must act. There must be no more U.S. military aid to Israel to continue Netanyahu's war. Israel must work toward a lasting peace that allows two states for two peoples. Your thoughts on that? I think it definitely needs to work toward uh, a two-state solution, along with us and, and others playing a, a constructive role. I think that— But what about the uh, funding? I think we need to continue to support aid for Israel. On the north, there's 130,000 rockets poised at them from Hezbollah. Their neighbors have repeatedly attacked them in the past. Um, we should continue to do that. However, however, this cycle of violence, um, anything that we do right now— is merely temporary and cannot last unless a process is really started for a two-state solution. That particular solution, by the way, kind of has, has not been on the agenda for some time, and we're trying to move it back onto the agenda and make sure it receives the attention it deserves. Should the aid be conditional on Israel agreeing to a process that takes us toward a two-state solution, or at least conditional, as some members of Congress have called for, for Israel following international law when it comes to this well, conflict? Yeah, definitely right now, the aid that goes to Israel is subject to some of those uh, restrictions. I think with regard to the two-state solution, I think there's nothing on the table right now for them to agree to. What we're saying is you got to reject whatever Netanyahu is saying as, as far as um, his belief in a two-state solution. And we have to start the negotiation process uh, with the neighbor, neighboring players uh, and make sure that there's something on the table to agree to. Let's talk about the relationship between the White House and the Congress. And Congress, um, the Biden administration bypassed Congress to send additional weapons, additional uh, bombs, et cetera, 
to Israel, which of course now are being used on Gaza. Um, you also have now seen the bombing of Yemen uh, to counteract the Houthis who are instituting a blockade in the Red Sea uh, in their way of protesting what Israel is doing in Gaza. Has the, does the White House, should the White House be coming to Congress um, to get authorization for those things rather than doing it uh, on their own? It depends. If it's an exigency, if it's an emergency, such as attacks on shipping and freedom of navigation, I think they have the the right to kind of make sure that our, um, our, our interests are protected. But with regard to any kind of wider war or any kind of wider conflict, they absolutely have to come to Congress for authorization. What about sending those weapons? Because they did that without coming for authorization. I was a little concerned about that. Um, and I think that this is something that um, again, there has to be full transparency, especially given the high emotions on all sides. Um, and that's kind of a process that, as you know, has been set out in Congress for aid to any country, especially Israel and others, over a pattern, a period of long time now. What is your concern, if you have one, um, that bombing Yemen um, could actually trigger a wider war. Uh, the, the blockade that the Houthis were instituting in the Red Sea was, had not killed anyone, but we have dropped bombs that have. Well, my, my bigger concern is that it could spark a, a wider war involving Iran. Houthis are acting as proxies for Iran. Iran, in turn, uh, could then uh, cause more instability in the region. As you know, they traded fire with Pakistan, their neighbor, just the other day. And so we have to make sure that that does not, um, you know, in, expand into a wider conflagration in the Middle East right now. Congressman Roger Krishnamurthy, thank you so much for being here. I uh, appreciate your time. We'll be right back.